Our project celebrates the amazing work of Amnesty International campaigning across the world for the rights and freedoms of all peoples, especially those imprisoned and tortured, for trying to give a voice to the oppressed. Together, with Amnesty and Age Exchange, we are making this film to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the signing of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is a milestone document in the history of human rights, drafted by representatives with different legal and cultural backgrounds from all regions of the world. The Declaration was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in Paris on the 10th of December 1948 as a common standard of achievement for all people and all nations. It sets out for the first time fundamental human rights to be universally protected and it has been translated into over 500 languages. We studied the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and then wrote some of our own, inspired by the 1948 Declaration. Here they are. The right to be myself. The freedom of worship. Freedom of expressing their religion. The right to speak my mind. Freedom of knowledge. The right to be able to speak your mind honestly. To be able to worship the religion of your choice. The freedom of being allowed to love freely. To have the freedom to have the end education. To have the freedom of speech. To have the right to have access to the health care I need. The right to say your opinion. The right to express my ideas. The freedom of expression. Rights for people with special needs. For our project, we have decided to focus on amazing people who Amnesty are currently working with to either free, campaign for or give voice to. This was the day every heartbeat, every movement and every sound stopped. Like an animal, my brother was thrown brutally into the back of a police van. If justice is not served, how can we convince our children not to hate the police? This was the day every heartbeat, every sound and every movement stopped. The sound of clocks no longer ticked alongside my daily activity. I woke up to hear the sound of my brother's name as it rang through my tender ear in fear. It was the day I lost my best friend, the light of my world, that was my brother, and all due to the dreads on his head which he rocked well. Like an animal, my brother was thrown brutally into the back of a police van and taken to hospital where he later left my life due to two gunshots fired at his gentle chest. He was shot not once but twice for a crime that he was not even aware of. The police officers were looking for an alleged crime suspect. He was a male with dreadlocks, and because my brother matched his description, he was shocked because his face could have been analysed to know it was the correct person. If justice is not served, how can we convince our children not to hate the police? The police officer who shot Nikki was dismissed after key witnesses refused to appear, fearful of what could happen. How can we fight Jamaica's corrupt legal system if we feel threatened to stand up and fight for what's right. Nakia is not the only victim of police brutality. This is constantly happening. We need to fight. Once my brother was killed, we fought hard in court to avenge his death. So no one else should have to feel the way I feel. No one else should have to endure the pain that I have. Although my family, friends and I have worked tirelessly hard to avenge the death of Nakia, Instead of securing a date in front of the judge, the police targeted them with harassment, intimidation and violence. The police are allowed to intimidate and prevent justice from coming to people's homes, harassing witnesses and trying to stop people from testifying against them. In other countries, this would be unacceptable and unheard of. But this is why I am planning on stopping it. 
justice for Nakaya and all the other victims who have suffered from police enforcement. Why is this happening? How is it allowed? People are devoting their lives to fight for human rights, for our rights. We need to have the opportunity to have a trial, to have justice delivered. If someone has done the wrong thing, they should have their time in prison, not sentenced to death. Shouldn't have justice come without fighting? Shouldn't an apology or a letter or any sort of sign that happened to Nikki was wrong come? No, I didn't get anything. And I won't stop fighting until I get it. I know all this won't bring him back, but as long as my voice is heard, as long as I get to stand up for what I believe in, then I will never give up. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights applies to every seven billion people on the planet. But why hasn't my voice been heard? Why have my rights as a human being been ignored? People tell me I should stop and give up because Nakia will never come back. But no, I'm not going to stop until I get it. If my battles are being lost, imagine people out there who can't stand up for what they believe in. So I'm not only doing it for Nakia, but I'm doing it for them. And I'm not going to stop fighting. I will never stop until justice for Nakia comes back. This was the day every heartbeat, every movement and every sound stopped. Like an animal, my brother was thrown brutally into the back of a police van. If justice is not served, how can we convince our children not to hate the police? Yours sincerely, Shaquilla Jackson. طيب هو النظام في مصر هو ضد عمل المدافعين والمدافعات عن حقوق الإنسان. قعدت طول عمري حلم في بلدي، الستات ما تتضربش، الستات ما تتختنش، الستات ما حدش يتحرش بيها في الشغل. أنا بدافع عن حقوق النساء ضد العنف الأسري والاضطهاد والتمييز. I, as a cinnamon, fight for prisoners of conscience, and as I stood there watching, as crowds of people were walking, I witnessed death. A woman I did not know took her last breath. Among a sea of flowers, a child was left motherless. This is a matter we must address. And though I told this horrifying story, all the danger has been put on me. I try to overcome fear and encourage hope, as I know that some women cannot cope. I need to keep free so I can keep fighting for women. We should value lives to give them freedom and I will suffer for people that don't have the freedom to have a voice. They said I was a spy. They targeted me, watched me. The media tried to turn people against me, treated me like a criminal as if I was the bad guy, but this didn't stop me. This was my decision, and I felt like it was my duty. They charged me, even accused me, of sundering Egypt's image of the ill treatment women face, but this didn't stop me. I was publicly embarrassed. They would say, as a cinnamon only brings trouble, she is the epitome of ignorance. I chose this way of life to defend victims of torture. I chose this way of life even when they would use my own words against me. Despite all of this, it didn't stop me and it never will. I am a woman rights defender. I am proud of the way I live and if I could go back in time, I would do it again, even more. Can you tell me anything about what happened? Yes. Are you going to? Said I can, never said I wanted to. I thought you wanted this interview. Front page news has been reserved. Why don't you want to tell me? Imagine if I asked you to relive every one of your worst moments, every moment of embarrassment, of fear or anguish. Imagine if I asked you to sit here and tell me every one of your nightmares back to back. Would you ever want to discuss that with me? No, of course not. Well then. I understand this must be hard for you, excruciating even. But I also know, whatever the man did to you, you survived. Surely it's better telling the story 
rather than hiding it if it has a happy ending. He hurt me because I'm a Muslim. A hate crime, plain and simple, with no reason to embellish it or make it over-exaggerated in any way, shape or form. He hurt me because I expressed my faith in ways he felt wronged him. They didn't. So to me, surviving wasn't the happy ending. How long ago was this? There doesn't need to be a time or a place. Times and locations don't matter. What you want to know is why a man wearing tinted sunglasses and a leather jacket shot me in an alleyway. You aren't interested in every detail and neither are your publishers. Giving this a context makes this seem more normal than it was. For example, if I were to tell you that this story happened in London in the middle of the night, you would immediately relax. You would put it down to drink or drugs, a man off his head with a weapon he shouldn't have had. That's the worst thing about context. It makes stories like this seem less tangible. So if I'm going to tell you this story, I'm going to do it on my own terms, with no names and locations, no facts, no figures, no details to help you. I'll tell it on my own terms, without any help from you. Understood? All right. The world's listening. I'm listening. Tell me your story. What are human rights? If they are supposed to be the basic rights of freedom, which belong to every individual in the world, it shouldn't matter what ethnic background you are from, or whether you're a female or a male. Human rights are not a tangible item. They should belong to a human being from the moment they are born, and no one can have them taken away. But yet, we go on living every day, not realizing how big of an issue this is on such a big scale. As a Solomon, was having lunch with some friends, in which he thought was a peaceful and safe environment. But this all changed within a second. A gunshot was heard and someone was dead. She was a mother of a four-year-old child, loving and kind, but no one could help her. As a Solomon wanted to testify in court, but was forbidden and considered a national threat. Sometimes I ask myself, where did our human rights go? And if this continues, what will our world become? Gunta Kinte was an African slave from Gambia. He was treated like an animal under his master's whip. He was forced to change his name to a European sounding name, Toby. How would you feel if you was Kunta Kinte, full of exhaustion and pain? Imagine it was you in his position. Slavery is still happening now. It is not completely in the past. Many years ago, there was injustice of black people and minorities. What was this? It was the ignorance of men. Black people were seen inferior to them, and we, well, to accept people of different colour and people that were apparently different to us because of choice of their religion or their own opinions. Treated like animals, they faced dehumanisation. The lack of freedom, they were stripped of their rights. Their names were taken away and they could not express their own opinions. As a result, they lost their roots. But human resilience shown throughout the years made them stronger. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? It's Mum? Mum, where are you? Do I'm okay, I'm fine. How are you? How's school? How's your brother? We got separated at the orphanage, but that's far from the point what happened to you. Sweetheart, listen, I don't think I'm going to be coming back soon. I just wanted to hear your voice before. Mum, what's going on? Nothing, it's nothing. Mum, just tell me where you are. I can help. I don't know where I am. What do you mean? Ask someone. It's not safe. I'm not allowed out. I sleep, I work and that's all. I can't remember the last time I went outside. I thought you went away to make some money for us and the baby. You're going to come back when you've made enough, right? You promised. I'm not getting money. I don't know when I can come back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I broke that promise. Mum, slow down. We are going to sort this out. Um, Mum, I'm sorry. Before I go, please don't tell your father. Don't worry him anymore. Mom. Please. Okay, but mom, are you a slave? I love you. I love you too, mom.
bị đá dưỡng cọt Đây bị thả cọt vợ tăng ngọt lưu Bởi người cái tay bị bụi nhầm I would like to start off by asking you a question. How would you feel if your home was being taken away from you without being told in advance? My name is Tatvani and I live in Village 22 at Bonkak Lane. I was born in Compound District. I have two children, one boy aged six and one girl aged five. Now I owe this property and land. Ever since I was a young girl, I never dreamed of having such a beautiful home with all this land and run a successful family business. Near all the schools, giving my children an incredibly high advantage of succeeding. I work extremely hard for my children only to give them the best future they can possibly have. My dream is for my son to grow up being a lawyer and my daughter to be either that or a medical doctor. Until the development came in 2008, I was hoping to stay in this safe and wonderful environment. We were so surprised and shocked. We weren't even informed in advance about the leasing of the Bonkak area for development. The government acted like there were no families living there. Not only was it disrespectful, but it was a violation to the human rights. Think about the families, unaware and confused. Where are we supposed to go? We cannot and we will not accept the government's disgraceful leasing for small compensation. Everything I do is for the sake of my children, to live a victorious and triumphant lifestyle I never had. Therefore, I protest peacefully for all the families and other people in the community. I'll do anything to make sure that my innocent children get the best education and live near schools. There is no justice whatsoever for poor people. People that live in poverty and have no money to fend for themselves. That is why I stand up for our human rights and take a stand with the people in my community for what is right. I am so motivated and encouraged to continue doing this in the future. I know that what I am doing is for the best. Therefore, I will not back down and I will continue fighting until I only have one last breath to breathe in. The agenda on all of my documents is wrong and I like to change it but I cannot because I am not sterile and I won't consent going to any surgery. First realized I was trans when I was maybe 16. Before that I didn't even really know what a transgender person was because in my village on the Finnish countryside where I grew up no one was even out as gay. My name is Sakris Capella. I lived in Finland. I would like to ask you a few questions before I begin my story. Can the government control you? Can they decide what gender you want to be? I disagree. I think we all have the right to choose whether we want to be female or male. I have never identified myself as a female. I feel more comfortable and I always have as a male. Yet my documents say otherwise. They say I'm a female. I choose a new name, which is considered to be male, a name that I feel comfortable with, I feel identified with, but everyone else disagrees, especially society. For me, this is a fight that won't end. I won't see my rights ignored, stepped on and violated. I'm standing up, I'm waiting for change. Who decided that people who are uncomfortable in their own skin should be punished for feeling that way? Conformity within society simply doesn't exist. Not everyone is the same as everyone else, and discrimination towards people such as myself, who are transgender from higher powers within Finland, is a disgraceful use of their authority. It is terrifying that this still happens today and has not been fought against until now. The concept of gender identity is pointless, often leading to political officials making decisions for our sexes based on nothing but stereotypes. 
Gender shouldn't be binary anymore. We should be allowed to be whoever we want to be without judgment from anybody. As Article 16 of the Human Rights Act clearly states, men and women of full age, without any limitation due to race, nationality or religion, have the right to marry and to found a family. But I have been sterilised because I'm a man that was forced to stay in a woman's body for far too long. What quality did the Finnish government think I lacked that would make me any less a father or husband? I should not have had to face humiliation on such a preposterous scale from people within Finland or anywhere in the world where trans people are treated as lesser citizens. This is no way for society to behave in the 21st century and we should not be condoning it or letting these things happen without a fight. I had no more of a mental illness than any man or woman in Finland. I simply didn't want to be someone I wasn't. The concept of gender identity should be kept away from doctors or the government if this is how I'm treated because of it. I deserve better than this. Article 23 says everyone who works has the right to just and favourable remuneration, ensuring for himself and his family an existence worthy of human dignity, but where was mine? I'm a medical student, a title worthy of human dignity by any means, yet because I am transgender, I've been denied two basic human rights and much of the fundamental sense of self-worth. So I stand here today with so many others as a defender of transgender and gender fluid rights across the world. Young students are in their classroom and are learning about discrimination through history and how important free will is and why equality is needed. Some students are asking their teachers questions, but one student asks their teacher what rights are. The teacher does not know how to answer it and wants the children to understand it for themselves. So she asks the other people around her. Different students raise their hands with some hesitation, but they do not give the definition but their own personal stories on human rights. One boy decides to tell his story. My family are refugees and came here by boat from Syria. My mother is always scared we will have to return, but my father reminds her that everyone has the right to life. The teacher admires the boy's honesty and tells him about Article 3 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Everyone has the right to life, liberty and security. From this answer, more students decide to raise their hands and join in the discussion. She says, my grandparents were discriminated against because of their race. My grandmother says my ancestors were slaves. Even after slavery was abolished, people were still discriminated against for the colour of their skin. Despite what you look like, everyone should be treated with respect, based on their personality and their morals, not on their appearance, religion and gender. Another student shares their story. My uncle is gay and grew up as a Christian. He was bullied for being himself as a teenager and only recently could be honest about who he is. I don't think of him as being gay. I think of him as my uncle who I love and I do not care about it and no one else should. Lastly, a girl raises her hand and says, I know, as a human, I have the right to freedom of speech, to think what I want to think and believe in what I want to believe in. The teacher explains thoroughly human rights, how even though someone may have different opinions, no matter if you agree with them or not, they have the right to their opinion. No one should treat people unequally without knowing them for who they are. Life is based on what kind of people we are and how we act. Through history, wars, death and dictatorship, we can learn and act upon our beliefs. Life is something to treasure and should not be taken for granted. Everyone should know what human rights are, that despite what you may think, that someone has power over you, it is your choice and your chance. We all have a voice, unlike some people, and should be grateful and encouraged to use it. So next time you are afraid to say something or disagree with something, no matter how little or how small, stand up for yourself and others, Judge if it is right or wrong, and do not be scared. Be the voice for the voiceless, so that hopefully, one day, we will all have a voice.